Hi friends, today we're taking a look at the dam designed Invictus. Now the Invictus, uh, at least on White Mountain Knives, comes five different ways. White Mountain Knives has got listings for this five different ways. Uh, a liner lock with G10 or a liner lock with titanium on both sides. And yeah, that's kind of unusual. Usually titanium on both sides means it's a frame lock. Now this is a liner lock in every format that it comes. Three different kinds of steel, 14C28N, S35VN, and 154CM. I got the most budget version, the Jade with the 14C28N. G10, either this Jade G10 or a sort of tannish uh, kind of uh, baby poop color G10. <laughs> it's actually a nice color. Just before I get into talking more about this, this is the final video this week. I'm doing a giveaway to celebrate 15,000 subscribers. Now, the giveaway is going to be drawn from one of the videos that I post this week. Now, this week is the last full week in February 2023. So if you're watching this at some other day, the giveaway is over. But the way to win in this giveaway is in one of the videos that I posted this week, you have to be a subscriber and leave a comment and I will randomly choose one of the comments in that random video of this week. And then if your name's drawn, you win. It's open to anybody that lives in any country that Canadians can ship to, which is pretty much worldwide. And uh, you win this knife, not this specific one. I've got a brand new one still in the box. This is the Sacra from uh, Real Steel Knives. And this time I'm gonna say it correctly. The Bowler K110 on this is, you know, basically an equivalent of D2 steel. It's not a Chinese version of D2. I've known that for a very long time, and yet somehow, whenever I say K110, I keep saying Chinese steel, but it's not. It's made by Bowler, which, you know, it's a great company uh, in the United States, in Europe. Uh, they operate in several countries making some good steel. Uh, you also get, you know, two screwdrivers, T8 and T6. These are the best screwdrivers I've ever used, and you get a pair of those. And there's going to be other stuff in there as well if you win. So make sure you comment on every single video that I've posted this week. The odds seem quite good. There seems to be about 45 to 50 comments per video. So that's like a 1 in 50 chance. Not bad. Now let's go over to the tabletop and we're going to take a closer look at this knife and we're going to talk about all the details. We're going to do a teardown, a full review, just like I usually do. Stick around. First off, we're going to talk about the steel on this knife. This is 14C28N by Sandvik. And yeah, they're still using that name even though they've, you know, the main company that owns Sandvik has been changing names and stuff. It's still called Sandvik 14C28N. They still have it with the uh, Tan G10 though. Uh, both the Jade versions in 14C28N and 154CM are currently sold out. Use that notify me option to get notified when they're back in stock. Talking about the price of this now, this thing is listed at $60 at White Mountain Knives. And of course you save 10% with coupon code CCE. That makes it 54 US dollars, which equals about 74 Canadian. Now you can buy this in Canada. Blades Canada has this very knife for $145. That's more than double the price after the currency has been factored in than it is at White Mountain Knives. That's just ridiculous. Like that's completely ridiculous. You can also get them directly from Damn Designs. Like I said, I will do a tear down later on, but first let's just go over the parts of this knife. We've got a drop point blade with a full flat grind, a back swept plunge here. The sharpener's trial is big enough. It comes out past the end of the plunge, which is a good thing. We've got a fairly thin edge. The sharpening on this knife is pretty wonky, which is pretty standard for knives in this price category. And the sharpness of this thing was not very good at all out of the box. I did some, I, I measured the sharpness first, I did some cutting and I just didn't like it. I think there was the tiniest burr left on this. I did strop it five times on each side on my strop. And the sharpness came down to about average for the knives that I review. 
So I, yeah, like I said, I think there was a little bit of a burr on here, but the blade shape is very effective. We've got a lot of belly here. It's great for slicing. It's good for cutting. Now slicing tends to be, you know, if you want to cut through this, slicing is, you know, that kind of motion. Cutting is straight in. Of course, not everybody defines them exactly the same way. And of course, piercing. And this knife is pretty well designed for doing all three of those kinds of tasks. So that's good. It's got a gray wash finish. That means it's got sort of like a, a gray coating, probably a gray titanium coating. And then they put it through a stone wash so that it's got a really nice mottled kind of look to it. The stone wash is very, very nice. We've got jimping on the spine of the blade and it's pretty nice jimping. It's not too aggressive. And if you keep your index finger back here, you know, the jimping this time comes out far enough. It's one of the few times I'm not saying, you know, bring the jimping out further. No, this jimping's quite good. There's a slight chamfer on the edge of there as well. The badging, we see their logo on the main bevel. I would have preferred that they put it up here on the flat instead of right there, but that's their damn design. There are two horns and there are two crossing knives. And here on the Ricasso, it says 14C28N. So badging, not bad, could be better but it's not bad at all. Now, all of the damn design knives have this sort of shape right here. The bigger knives have got it larger. It's roughly a centimeter across, and the smaller knives have got a smaller version of this. So that's another sign that this is a damned design knife. Uh, with that hole cut out in the G10, that's what stops the pin from spinning. So it's a non-spinning pivot pin. On this side, we've got a T8 screw. Uh, we've got a flipper tab that's got jimping on the front and across the top. The front jimping, of course, you get your finger behind it and it opens really well. The detent on this thing is quite well dialed in and you know that works just fine. Of course, just pushing to the side a little bit works as well. I'll show you that detent now. You know, it's not loud or anything, but it sucks it in, holds it in, well done. When the knife is open, that jimping that was on the side here and even on the top, you can reach forward and use it a little bit that way, putting your middle finger over here. It's not really recommended. You don't have a lot of real estate there, but you can do it. And then the jimping at the front there becomes a good guard. If you are piercing, you know, you're pretty secure stopping your hand from sliding over the end. Even the jimping on the lock release, you know, helps with that grip a little bit. Lock up, solid, no blade play side to side, up and down. The lockup meets the blade pretty much exactly where I like it to be. It's fully engaged, but there's loads of room for it to wear over. Nice cutout on this side to get at that lock release bar or the lock bar and push it to the side and then close the knife. So the pivot area is quite well done and the action's quite well done. And I'll show you the bearings in just a minute or two. The handle scales, like I said, these are G10. I like the JD10. I like dyeing my own handle scales. And they're, they're quite nice. I don't know if you can see it on here. Let me get the try to get it just right. There's lines milled in all along the length. And then there's another three lines that start here. Back here, it's two lines for a very short distance. And then one little trench milled in back here. That helps give it a little bit of definition. The flat slab section is just this narrow, well, not so narrow, but this section down the middle, and that's got your typical G10 texture on it. The grip on this knife, it's pretty secure. I'll talk more about the grip on this in just a minute. Uh, lots of skeletonizing in there. I'll show you that later on. We've got a G10 backspacer with a lanyard hole back here. Now, this concept, I really like the concept of this kind of lanyard hole. I dislike the placement of it. You can see, like when I take it apart, I'm sure that it'll be enough. They could have put it at the back. Now, I much prefer the lanyard to come out of the back instead of out of the spine of the handle, because if I'm holding it like this, where's that lanyard? Well, that lanyard is pushing into my hand. That's the only option I have. Now, if it came out the back, then it's coming out the back. So the placement for this is off, but the style of lanyard option I'm very, very fond of that style of lanyard hole. We've got pocket clip, which got T8 screws as well, and it's a deep carry clip. It does come up on the end here, but 
I didn't find that part of the pocket clip to be hot at all. I did find this section here to be a little bit hot in hand, and it's right and left friendly. They got a place taker here, like some steel, another T8 screw, so that on your show side, if you're right-handed, you know, it's covered up. And if you're left-handed, you move the pocket clip over, you just move that piece over to this side, and move the spacer up, and then it looks just fine, although you've got that T8 hole right there. Now let's check with my screwdriver what these look like. There we go, very nice fit. Almost no perceptible play at all and yet it sinks in a good amount. Let's check these. These are the same, the tiny, tiniest bit more play on those. And this one, yep, just the tiniest bit more play than on the pivot screw. So I really like these T8 screws. How well does a pocket clip work? Let's demonstrate that. Slides on, slides over, it's good. No complaints about this pocket clip. Now, you want to see how it's really constructed. Let me take it apart and show you. Well, we've got a problem. Uh, you can probably see on the close-up picture, I'm starting to chew up that screw. I, that's just locked in. I, th I guess they use Loctite. It's just locked in very, very tight. Uh, I can take it off on this side, and, you know, the screw comes out. But for some reason, that's locked in super tight. I dislike that immensely. That's not good at all. But at least now I can take the knife apart. I'll just give it a few wiggles so it comes apart. Uh, there's the back spacer. There's an indexing pin on it. And there's, and there's a spacer for the pocket clip. And uh, lots of skeletonizing out here. We've got ceramic ball bearings in a phosphor bronze cage. That's a typical nine ball bearing you know, setup. And other than that, very simple construction. Nice and clean. So I'm very disappointed in that screw right there. So what I'm going to do, oh, I just dislike that. I wish I could take, get that loose. That won't come out now. Oh, there, now it's coming loose. So there's something else going on with how tight it was. It's not tight. It was loose enough I did it with my finger. You saw that. So I wonder why it was binding so badly. That's not good. Not good at all that it was binding like that. And it's very odd. I've never experienced that, that before. That it's loose enough to open by finger, but it was binding so tight when I tried to use a screwdriver. And yes, I do know how to use screwdrivers. Uh... Hmm, very odd. Anyhow, that's how it's constructed. Let me put it back together again and talk about all the dimensions, sizes, all that stuff. Well, actually, just before I do the sizes, I forgot to show you blade alignment is pretty much perfect. It's very, very nice. And now that I've put some gunny glide in here, the action's even smoother and faster. I thought it was quite good before, but yeah. It's very, very nice now. I'm very happy with it. Uh, now, you know, it's what the kids like to call drop shutty. Of course, it's not just the kids, but yeah, nice. Very happy with that. Sizes and dimensions. Weight first, 144 grams, 5.08 ounces. A little bit on the heavy side. They did a lot of skeletonizing. Oh, I didn't show you this before either. The balance point. It's pretty good. If they would have skeletonized it just a little bit more, it could be a little bit forward, but that's quite good. Better than most knives that I review. I like it to be closer to the pivot pin than it is, you know, back here. If it's just over this finger choil, that's totally acceptable for a balance point. So the factory sharpness, 215 bests. On my testing, the way I do my testing, of course, each person gets sort of different results because their technique. With my technique, the average score is about 140 bests from the factory for budget knives. This one got 215. After I stropped it five times on each side, I got a score of 155, so very close to average. So yeah, just something didn't go quite right on sharpening. I'll tell you more about that in a second. The cutting edge length. 86.6 millimeters, 3.41 inches. Blade length, tip to the closest spot on the handle. See how it comes forward? That's a bit less, 80.6, 3.17 inches. 
the thickness of this blade stock, 3.91 millimeters, 0.154 of an inch, so you know a good amount over an eighth. Blade depth, it's biggest right back here, 32.1 millimeters, 1.26 inches. How thick is it behind the grind? Now this is fairly consistent. It's a little thicker at the tip, but fairly consistent. 0.45 millimeters, 17 and a half thousandths of an inch. Pretty good. The grind angles, yeah, this is where it's not so great. The averages look almost okay. 23 and a half on this side. The average on this side, 22.6. But it goes downhill from there. This guy started at the heel at 26.3 degrees ended at 18.9 degrees. That's 7.4 degrees of change along the length. This side started at 25.5, ended at 21.5, so four degrees of change. This side's better sharpened, but still over 20 degrees per side. You know, this kind of steel for this kind of knife, I wouldn't go over 18 degrees per side. On to the handle. The handle length, not counting the pocket clip sticking out a little bit extra, 124.2 millimeters, 4.89 inches. The grip area, it's a bit over nine centimeters or 90 millimeters, a bit over three and a half inches. But you know, with this rounded corner here, where do you measure it to, right? The thickness of the handle scales, not talking about any hardware or anything, just on the G10, 13.7 millimeters, 0.539 of an inch. Like I said, it's a little chunky. The handle depth within the grip area, what's the widest point? It's right there. 30.8 millimeters, 1.21 inches. When the knife is closed, what's the widest point? Well, it's at the flipper. 38.9 millimeters, 1.53 inches. And the total length of this knife, it's around 205 millimeters, 8.07 inches. What do I think of this knife? Well, I haven't talked about the biggest con yet. Hopefully you're still watching so you didn't miss the biggest con. And the biggest con is the edges here are very crisp. And when you grab the knife tight, it gets hot in the hand, especially the index finger in the right hand. Now, I've said this several times on a few videos, liner locks, you know, they, they make this for right-handed people, but they're much more comfortable in the left hand. They just always are because of biology. The way your hand is shaped, your index finger wants to wrap around there and this is cut away further and it just matches the angle of your hand. See this bone here between my main knuckle and there, it goes across and the cutaway there goes across on that kind of angle as well, you know, like that. So when you grab it, it's comfortable. This side, you know, it's the opening here is going down this way, but my hand is going the opposite way. That finger is going the opposite way of the space in here. And so if this edge here is crisp or hot at all, you're going to feel it. And you feel it a lot on this knife. There's a mistake with this knife. And, you know, there's a tiny bit of a cutaway here, but there needs to be a big chamfer in here and then round the G10 over. Now you can do that at home, you know, with some sandpaper. G10's got glass fibers in it, so don't breathe in that dust. It's pretty bad for your lungs. Uh, it's a cancer risk actually for your lungs, but that needs to be reworked. If there's somebody from Damn Design listening, you know, just grab it with your right hand and squeeze. Like if you're gonna be using this knife for 20 minutes for cutting, that finger right there is gonna be annoyed with you you got to be able to notice that. So do something about that. But in the left hand, it feels just fine. And you can put the pocket clip on the left hand. So if you're left-handed, I'm much more uh, big on this knife than if you're right-handed. Unfortunately, 90% of the population is right-handed. Let's talk about the rest of the pros and cons. The cutting performance, the blade shape, very nice. Good for cutting, slicing, piercing. Everything's good there. Really good hardware except for this little fluke right there. And I, I'm sure that's a fluke. Like now that I've put it back together, it works just fine. So there was something catching on that. And I'm sure that that's not very common at all. So I'm not being too hard on it for that screw not working. Unless people in the comments say they had the same issue. I don't know. The action's good. The detent's good. The pivot's good. The alignment's good. The lockup's good. You know, the stuff in here, quite good. 
not on the handle so much. I like this gray wash finish. It's mostly comfortable in the hand, at least in the left hand. And um, yeah, thank you to my supporters. Those of you who give me money every single month, I appreciate your help an awful lot. You can help out for as little as $2 a month US. Go to patreon.com slash CCE or click that join button down below to get started. And I think you're going to like the perks. Please remember to subscribe, like, share, comment. Those things really do help. I know YouTubers harp on those things, but they really do help the channel an awful lot. And it only takes you less than five seconds of your time to, you know, hit that share button, hit that like button, whatever. Thank you so much for that. And remember, friends, always cut towards your chum, not your thumb.